So the correct robots.txt file help your website index better and faster on search engine like Google. And it also reduces the number of errors in Google search engine console. The robots.txt file is a set of instructions for web crawlers. These web crawlers are sent by Google to analyze your website and then index the pages from your website on search engine. And with robot.txt, we can set some instruction or a guide telling these bots that which pages or website they should process and which website pages they should leave and do not bother about them or do not try to access those pages. In this robots.txt tutorial, we're going to learn about following things. What is robots.txt and why we should use robots.txt file? How to create a perfect robots.txt file? And we'll see how to write instruction for search engines to follow. Then we'll talk about what's the best robots.txt file for different platforms like for WordPress, for Blogger, Wix, Shopify, Webflow. Because robots.txt concepts are same for all these kind of platforms, but some instruction can make these website index better on search engine. And then you're gonna learn how to upload it to your website and submit to Google your new and effective robots.txt file. In the last, we'll see some common robots.txt errors like robots.txt not found, search engine are blocked, all these things. And after all this, if I forget something, please comment on the video. I answer to all the comments on the channel. I'll be really happy to help you out. Okay, so first thing, what is robots.txt? A robots.txt file is instruction for web crawlers, often used by search engine like Google, Bing, or any other search engine. And it acts like a guidance for these crawlers. So when these bots come to a website, we instruct them, please access this page on our website, and please do not access these pages on our website. Every website can have only one robots.txt file. And right now I recommend you open your website, enter the URL in the browser and then type robot.txt and hit enter. And then you must see a robots.txt file on your website. And you can always find this file in the root folder. You can see under public underscore HTML, you have this robots.txt. By default, if you're using a CMS like WordPress, Shopify, Webflow, Wix, there'll be automatically robots.txt file created and uploaded to your server. But don't worry about it. Today we're going to learn a lot of things about it and even if you have a default one, we're going to change it to an effective one. Just very quickly, let me explain you why we should use robots.txt file. Okay, the first benefit will be prevent crawling overload. So what happens when these web crawls visit your website? And suppose you have so many pages on your website or you have some complex functionality on your website. It might bring load to the website. And you might not need all these pages to be crawled by Google because these pages are for internal purposes. Maybe there's some code pages, some pages which you really don't need this crawler should exist. So by defining rules in robots.txt file, we can limit Google bots not to bring load to the website. Second benefit will be to block unimportant pages. So may want to prevent crawlers from indexing pages that are not relevant to search results, such as login pages, admin pages, you don't want them to list it on search engine results. And if they're listed there, that's not a good thing for you. For example, somebody put your website URL in the Google search engine and they find a random page which is used for backend and which you use to admin your WordPress website. So by Robots.txt file, we can block these kind of pages to be crawled by Google. And third benefit is to maintain privacy. By using robots.txt, we can really exclude some pages like login pages, card pages, checkout pages to be indexed on Google. And fourth benefit is faster indexing. When you add robots.txt file, we can add sitemap of our website there because robots.txt file will be the first thing search engine will crawl on your website. So when they crawl this first page, they will know where is the sitemap or this website. So we'll directly go to the sitemap and then they will find out all the pages you want to be indexed on Google. If you don't add a website sitemap, that's fine. Eventually Google will find about it or maybe you can submit your sitemap on search engine console. But yes, it is really nice way to add your sitemap in your robots.txt file because Google is not only search engine. There's so many search engine and I'm sure you don't submit your sitemap to Bing, Baidu, Yandex or other search engine on internet. So if you add a sitemap of your website in robots.txt file, Always these robots will come to this file and they find a sitemap and they know the all the structure pages which you want to be indexed on search engines, not just on Google. So this is another benefit. So now we know all these things, let's create a nice robot.txt file. So open a notepad or any file editor which you want and then first thing in every robot.txt file we'll add is called user agent. So here user agent means the bots coming from different search engines or from anywhere else on the internet. And make sure guys you write this correct syntax, you write user dash agent, then you can write asterisk or you can say star. So what happens when you add this thing? It means this is the instruction for all the web crawlers on the internet. And if you want to write a specific instruction for a specific web crawler for a specific search engine, you can write name of the search engine bot. For example, you can say Google bot for Google bot or you can write Bing bot for Bing bot. 
and then you can define some instruction for this. But in most of the cases, you don't need this thing until you really have some purpose to block specific board. So most of the cases, you're gonna keep a strict here and then we write the instruction. Okay, let's start with the first instruction, which is called disallow. And then we add colon and then we need to define the URLs or directory or any path on your website, which we don't want all the search engine to access. Because here you see user agent, we say user agent and asterisk, which means this instruction is for all the search engine. For example, this is a private directory on my website or URL, they start something like this private. And then in the end, I will not write anything else. I leave that like this. That means any URL or any structure on my website matching like this, we're telling Google bot or other bots that please do not access these pages. Now it's totally depend on these bots whether they want to respect our instruction or not. Mostly they do that because it's also easier for them to find the pages only which we want to index. It brings a lot of load on them if they just try to access all the pages which is not necessary. So this was for disallow. Now to allow the pages, we will add allow colon and then we will write, for example, public. And then all the pages, they will be allowed and crawled by Google. And now you will say, okay, how many pages you all will add here? Because there can be hundreds and thousands of pages on your website which you want to be accessed by Google. So allow we do not use in the cases where you want to allow the page on your website. We use it for a specific function. For example, let me show you when we use allow. So for example, we write disallow private. But there are special pages inside that we want to be accessed by Google or other search engine board. So what we'll do, we just write instruction disallow private directory or private URLs. And then we'll write allow private and then special pages. So what will happen now? Everything in this directory private or all the URLs which have this private, they'll be disallowed. But when you see private slash special pages, everything under that will be allowed. And you want Google them to crawl those pages. And this is a special case, guys. For most of you, 90% of you people, you don't need to use allow. Mostly in the cases, you're gonna use the disallow syntax. And that's really helpful for us. And that's the thing where we can take maximum benefit of it. And we can reduce search console errors from our Google Search Console account. Okay, now you understand how disallow and allow works. And guys, there are only two more things in robots.txt file and that's it. That's all robots.txt is really easy to learn and that can bring a big impact on your website SEO. Another thing is crawl delay. So what you can do, you can write crawl delay and for example, you can say write 20, 10 or anything. So this is a delay between a search in what crawl your website pages. And this rule doesn't apply on Google. A lot of people think it's apply on Google, but it doesn't apply on Google. Google wrote a blog about it. And here you can see they have this quiz. I can control Google bot with crawl delay rule. And for example, if you select true, which most of the people think, no, it's a wrong answer. And when you select false, this is the right answer. The non-standard crawl delay robots.txt rule is not processed by Google bot. But I recommend you to keep this here. Maybe I'll change it to 10 because there's some other search engines or other bots which can respect this rule. And it's not harming your website. It is a preventive measure to keep on your website. Okay, the last thing will be the sitemap in robots.txt file. And this will help your website to index faster on search engine. So you can write something like this sitemap and then your website sitemap URL. If you don't know what is your website sitemap URL, that's a different topic. But most of the cases you can write your website URL slash sitemap dot XML. People using rank pen, they can type the website URL slash sitemap underscore index dot XML. And guys, this is really helpful to add your website sitemap here because, okay, we go on Google search engine, we add our website sitemap and Google know where is our website sitemap. But last time when you went to Bing search engine console and then you added your website sitemap there or any other search engine, you added your website sitemap. Or for any different purposes, if you're using a SEO tool, when you submit your website sitemap there. So it is best practice whenever a bot comes to your website, first they come to robots.txt file and they directly see your website sitemap here so that they can directly go to the page from where they can index the posts and pages on your website. So it's very really nice practice guys. Do this, I recommend to everybody this thing. And if you're still watching this video, I'm sure you're getting some value out of this video. I'll be really happy if you like the video and subscribe to the channel because these videos take a lot of time to first script, then record, and then edit and then upload to the YouTube. So I really appreciate if you like and subscribe. Please also share this video with your friends so that they can also improve their skills. Okay, let's go back to the video. Let's talk about the perfect robots.txt for several platforms. So we'll talk about WordPress, Blogger, Wix and Shopify. But the things we'll talk about, you can apply to any kind of website, even for custom websites. On your screen, you can see this is the perfect example for a robots.txt file for a WordPress website with WooCommerce. If you are not using WooCommerce, you can remove this line, check out, cart and then add to cart. Only these three lines and then rest of it you can upload to your 
any kind of WordPress website. And if you're using WooCommerce, you can copy directly this file and add to your website. And guys, make sure to replace your URL here. Do not leave this thing. Replace website URL and make sure this is your website sitemap URL. You can also go to the description of this video to download this robots.txt file. Let me give an introduction of what's happening here. So what we are doing here, we are telling to user agent asterisk, which means we are giving general instruction to all the web crawlers from the various search engines. And what we are saying, disallow WP admin because WP admin folder contains the backend pages of our website. We don't want any page from there to be indexed. Then we are saying disallow WP includes folder because that folder also contains backend stuff. We are saying disallow the cart URLs. So by somehow, if there's some cart pages, which error you see a lot in Google Search Engine Console, you have this kind of pages. You can see some error in Search Engine Console when you have some URL which contains cart. So when you add this rule here, disallow cart, then you will not face this error on your website because we are saying Google do not access these pages. These are not for you. And then same thing we're doing with checkout pages and my account pages because my account pages are personal pages for individual users on your website. And this one is very common error. A lot of you face in Google Search Engine Console account. So you find a lot of URLs which says slash question mark s is equal to an s can be anything. It can be any URL here. It's a wild card. We use like a wild card. It can be anything here. Like you see, we are using user agent any bot here. So same thing here. We're using disallow slash question mark s equal to and after anything any string can be here because what happened when people search something on your wordpress website somehow google came to know about these pages and then what happens google know about these pages but google say okay we are not going to index these pages on our search engine and then you see this error on your search engine account and then you say okay how i can get rid of these kind of errors so this is how you can get rid of this kind of errors when your search pages on your website and then same we disclose add to cart pages also here, this is a special thing. We add allow WP content slash uploads. All the files we upload, they go under the uploads folder. And we want image SEO on our website or maybe a video SEO on our website. So by allowing us, we are saying, Google, okay, we are allowing you to go and access the image on our website. And what do you will say about other pages on the website? Why we don't allow them? By default, they allow. We are just disallowing pages here. And also when you add the sitemap, all the pages we want, all the US we want to be allowed by Google, they all will be added in sitemap and guys this will save you a lot of trouble because it's we are giving our instruction to google that only index these pages and guys trust me if you use this robot.txt file you will have so less issues with search console for your website let's see perfect robot.txt file for blogger same thing we'll do very easy user agent asterisk and then disallow slash search disallow updated max is equal to asterisk disallow asterisk max result is equal to asterisk what we are doing here if anything comes like this in the ul google should not call that page from our blogger website and then m is equal to one so now this is the thing a lot of people have this issue about m is equal to one and people say okay what is the solution of it some people on youtube they suggest some solution with some weird javascript code at this website and that m is equal to one is going to remove and i received so many comments on this video i'll add this video here and, and people say i did not provide any solution to remove m is equal to one guys there's no solution to remove m is equal to one this is how blogger works. What you can do, you can tell to Google to disallow this kind of URLs because you cannot change it. By JavaScript, you can change it after the page loads. But initially, this URL will always be there for mobile pages. If you want to watch the detailed video, I will add the link in the description on top icon. This is a very interesting video. And guys, please read the comments. People don't understand what's happening there. Even I try to explain in the most easy way that why they should not worry about M is equal to one pages. And what you need to do is add disallow m is equal to 1 in robots.txt. So Google and other search engine bots will disallow this kind of pages. And then you can add your website sitemap also here for blogger. Okay, now let's talk about Wix website. So same thing, user agent asterisk. We will disallow editor, users, sites, account, login, sign up, card, checkout. And this will really save you a lot of call budget because we don't want Google waste their time and bandwidth or accessing these kind of pages. And then we'll allow sitemap.xml and, and then we'll add the URL of sitemap. Actually, we do not need to write allow sitemap.xml. You can leave this allow statement here. We already added the sitemap of the Wix website here. And again, guys, I want to remind you, you can download this file in the description of this video. Let's see for Shopify, what we're doing here. This is a robots.txt file, perfect for Shopify. We're disallowing the admin pages, card pages, checkout pages, all order pages, account pages, and then collections, sort by pages, and filter pages. And we are allowing sitemap and then URL of sitemap. Again, you can exclude this and you can also download this file in description. This is a perfect file for Shopify. Okay, now how to upload this robot.txt file on your website. If you have a WordPress website, a custom website or any kind of site where you can access the files 
What you need to do, go to public underscore SQL folder. And if you already have robots.txt file, you can right click and then click on edit. And if the file is really basic, something like this, you can remove everything and then you can add this code. And guys, you already have some content there. Make sure you're not removing the important information. And then you can save changes. If you're using Rank Math plugin on WordPress website, make sure you're in advanced mode. When you're in advanced mode, then you can go to general settings. And then in the left sidebar, you can find edit robots.txt. Then you can paste the code here. You can see I am having this warning contents are locked because robot.txt file is present in the root folder. I think I'm not able to add my robot.txt file because of the security plugin I'm using on the website. But in case, if you're able to add, add the code here. Or what else you can do? Go to your website cPanel, go to the go to file manager, public HTML, and then you can add this file how I explained to you. In case you don't have robot.txt file, what you can do, you can click here on file plus, then you can create a file robots dot txt make sure guys it is robots dot txt not robot dot txt and create new file in case of blogger website what you need to do is go to settings here and then scroll the page and then you'll find this option enable custom robots dot txt then you see this text here custom robots dot txt it looks like it is a text but if you click on this text what you can do you can add the content here how i explained in the tutorial and guys please make sure sometime what happened i did some mistake while creating the videos so what i do i correct those mistakes in the description or I try to add some text on the screen. So if I say something wrong or by mistake, so please make sure to check the description video. You can have more information there. And let me in comments in a polite way that if you find some mistake on my videos, that will be really helpful. And guys, for Wix, Shopify, and other kind of platform, I'll add in the description how you can edit your robots.txt file there. Some CMS does not allow to add robots.txt file. I'll explain that also, which doesn't allow, but please check the general instruction in the description video. Okay, now let's see how we can submit this new robots.txt file to Google. So you need to log into your Google Search Console account and then you need to click on settings. So once you go in settings, you need to scroll the page and you find this option robots.txt and you say valid or invalid. And then you can click here on open report. And then from here, you can see these three dots and then you click on request a recrawl. So what will happen? Google will recrawl your new robots.txt file. But one important thing guys, this is not a mandatory step. By default, Google keep calling your website again and again. So if you added a new robots.txt file, or if you have changed the robots.txt file to new content, it will be automatically read by Google within a few hours. So don't worry about too much this step, but still I recommend you if you want faster result, this is how you can submit your robots.txt file to Google. Okay, now let's talk last things, which are two common errors for robots.txt. First one is robot.txt not found. If you're facing this error, just go to C panel, how I explained you, go to root folder public underscore HTML, click on plus file, and then you can just create robots.txt file and then create new file, add the content, this error will be gone. The second error I see a lot of people find is search engines are blocked by robots.txt. So in that case, sometimes what happens, you'll find something like this on your website, where you say user agent, asterisk, wild case, and then you have this allow colon and then slash, which means we disallow all the pages on your website. Guys, okay, disallow should be used with specific pages. Like remember we did here, disallow W admin pages, WP include pages, card pages, checkout pages, my account pages, when we write disallow, we write something here. And after this, everything will be disallowed. So if we have something like this, disallow, colon, and then slash, it means we disallow complete site to be accessed by Google or other bots. So make sure you don't do this mistake. And guys, very importantly, above all, Google might choose to reject your request here. And Google still can index some pages from your website which you don't want to index. For example, this is a page on your website which is called xyz.html. And you are saying in robot.txt, do not access this page but that page is linked somewhere else on internet on different website. So Google might know about that page. So in that case, what you can do, you can add no index tag on those pages to make sure they're not indexed by Google. That Google will respect. And I created a detailed video about it. If you want to know how to add no index tag, check out this video screen. Like always, if you find some value from this video, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I would really, really appreciate that.